You can call me stupid Yes, you can call me sheep You can say I Yeah, go for it, man. Hey, I'm uh, I'm Struan from uh, Remote Recycled, and uh, this is my Yamaha TT600 1989 model that I've uh, spent every week and spare minute of my life plowing money into getting it ready for the bike shed show. Uh, so I'll have a I'll give you a little talk through what I've done to the bike. So it's um, initially it was never meant to be a project; it was meant to be a runaround. But the engine shitting the bed uh, quite catastrophically uh, meant that I had to take the engine out of the bike. Uh, several times to get it running right so I uh, when the engine was out the second time and I still hadn't found the parts I needed uh, and not having any time to start my other project bike this became my project bike uh, last year at the show I was sat looking and I just I had the idea that I would like my bike to be here next year so that's that's exactly what happened so I've, I've, I've been uh, I think since the end of February when I got accepted uh, I've just been head down trying to get this bike finished so so once I got the engine, the engine was already apart, I had it all vapor blasted, uh, not without that, that, that had some issues as well, uh, trying to find the cylinder head uh, for the, that particular model of Yamaha TT600 was quite difficult, but I, I got some helpful people who helped me out with that, so, um, so while the engine was out and, and uh, getting vapor blasted, some of the other parts were getting vapor blasted, swing arm, uh, the, the fork lowers, uh, handlebars and everything else, so uh, I've managed to fit a uh, Honda CB360 tank, uh, so that had to be different points welded on, uh, additional mounts put in so it sits nicely on the bike. Uh, this is the second tank because the first one was pinholed full of holes, which was uh, less than ideal. Two weeks, three weeks before the, the build, that my, my painter discovered that. So, uh, and then I've relocated, I've moved, got rid of the um, all the plastics that initially came with the bike. So I built a battery box that relocates the ignition. It's got a kill switch in here and that's just mounted from a few additional brackets I put on. Um, the seat was a uh, fiberglass base and then there's a, a person called French Touch Upholstery in um, Aberdeen that sorted me out with a, with a, a seat colour. Um, this rear mudguard I, I made out of uh, a mould, uh, so it's fiberglass mould, so I, uh, I used the existing mudguard but I didn't like the, how long it was, the sheet, or the, the, there was a few dips in it, so I, um, I made a mould out of fiberglass and then got that cut nice and pretty and the, the, the painter was able to uh, to tidy it up a little bit because I've left it still a bit dog-eared. Um, got new wheels uh, from Hand Wheels in uh, the Netherlands. So they um, had a few issues with wheels, uh, time constraints, got a suppliers letting me down so Hand Wheels came through, uh, built me a rear wheel to my original hub and uh, last week, a week ago, they ended up pulling it out of the bag and managing to get me a front wheel as well because my supplier had let me down. So these look really good with the Hydeno tyres. Uh, all of it's been powder coated, frame's been powder coated, frame's been shortened as well and I reused the existing frame look uh, just because I, I, I wanted the bike to look almost original rather than like a different profile uh, frame look. And then all of it's been sprayed in a pearl satin Subaru white uh, and I think it finishes the bike off lovely. It's, uh, my original plan for the bike was to make it look as though it had come out of the factory that way, uh, like a special edition model and that's uh, I, I'm, I'm really chuffed with the results. It's been a lot of... Uh, oh, actually that's quite cool. Uh, we had some 3D printed uh, velocity stacks, which probably aren't ideal for it being a scrambler and I need to kind of get uh, some gauze over there, but I can't ever really see this thing getting touch, touching dirt, if I'm being honest. So, uh, yeah, it's been a bit of a mission and a huge amount of learnings, but it's been great to see my bike here at the end of the day and uh, all the appreciation it's getting from, from, uh, from the folk like yourself and, uh, and other people. So, yeah, it's brilliant. Cool. But when it comes to her, you better keep it sealed. Don't you dare say a single word, or I will strike you where it feels. You think that using her would get to me, and if you're right, then you're in trouble, D. Cause I won't break, no, I know I won't wait.
don't know. Right, so I've lost my voice today. I've been talking all day yesterday, so I can't speak at all. So that's probably not going to work. Um, yeah, so this is the 79, and I'm squeaking as well. <laughs> I'm squeaking. My voice is breaking. This is a 79 CB750K, so it's a 10th anniversary edition. What the principle behind this bill is, this is for a friend, and he's obsessed with the Warriors film, the 1979 Warriors film, because that film came out the same year as this. We thought, well, why not tie it in? So this is kind of like the bike that the Warriors themselves would be riding in 1979. So it's a bit of rough and ready tumble. There's bits that we've left here, like the old, um, the old nuts at the back for the shocks. are still the original ones. We've got rusted nuts at the side here. So there's part new. These these head of bolts at the top, they're new. So it's part new, part old. And what we wanted to do is do some upcycling as well. So old sheet metal from uh, from the garage. The seat is an old leather jacket that we cut up from eBay. That was about 10 quid from there. Uh, the rear foot peg mounts, they're from a CB750F of the same year. So cutting the frame to fit that. Uh, rear hoop with an integrated tail light. The biggest job we had with this was the engine. So the entire bottom end was gone the engine. There was copper shavings and everything in, in the oil and the, the oil filter was completely clogged up. So I needed a complete rebuild from the bottom end up, new piston rings, um, the everything was honed, polished, everything. Carburetors are now running k pods. We've got k breather, crankcase pods at the bottom there. Uh, the guy who's going to be riding this has got a size 16 feet, which is why we've actually gone, not from a rear set, but we've actually gone for really wide pedals, because otherwise he wouldn't be able to get his feet up and down it. That's the biggest thing with normal bikes, you just can't ride them because of the size of his feet. Built well, grips at the front, integrated uh, bar end indicators here. Complete rewiring, not with a motor gadget. I, I regret not doing that. I should have used an M, an M unit for that. Just a simple clock at the front, adding the levers. And then on the headlight at the front, we decided to do something different there. So we've got the yellow headlight and then just masked everything off with the vinyl, just so it's a bit more of a, of like a warrior feel. So if you think of like, the armoured vehicles that go into war and things like that, they've just got a tiny slit for the, for the uh, viewing window. So that's kind of the, the influence from that. And that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Oh, and the tank and the cowl are just bare steel. So eventually they will probably rust, but they've been coated with some um, boiled linseed oil. So hopefully that'll prevent the rust from coming too soon. But it's just, yeah, ev every month you'll probably have to just go over it and coat it with linseed oil. But. That's all.